This video is brought to you by Diamond Pacific Tool Corporation. Diamond Pacific is America's favorite diamond tool, wheel, and lapidary machine manufacturers. For nearly half a century, Diamond Pacific has set the industry standard for diamond lapidary equipment. Join the majority of professional lapidaries and choose Diamond Pacific products such as their Nova Wheels, Pixie, Genie, and Titan Gem Makers, as well as their wide selection of other high quality lapidary diamond products. Check out Diamond Pacific today and find out why they're considered America's premier diamond lapidary tool manufacturers. All right, here at Gem World and Quartzite, we went to the one in Tucson. That was a lot of fun. We were there with Sweet Jim and Sandy. Uh, yeah, there's one here in Quartzite, one in Phoenix, and one in Tucson. If you haven't checked out our Tucson one, make sure to check that out. Pretty much it's a store that uh, supplies other stores. You can buy small, but uh, just a place that, you know, definitely caters to selling to mom and pop rock shops and stuff. A lot of people who vend at the Tucson show or Quartzite or little shows around the country definitely buy from these folks, either from their Quartzite, Tucson, or Phoenix locations. A gentleman named George is actually the owner of this place. Thanks to my friends, um, he got, well, I got permission to come and film here today, which is a blessing to get permission to say this showing up, especially at a retail store. Cool Orthoceras sink from Morocco. My good friend Walker Stevens just got back from Morocco where they actually make these, and they're using angle grinders and stuff. But uh, those are a lot of fun. These are some cool heated and natural cathedrals. Good staple of any rock shop, right? Something like you might see from Village Originals, but you know, whoever Village is getting them from, uh, Mr. George is probably also getting them from. Don't see any prices on these. It's definitely sold by weight, you know? There's some rough out here. I didn't know they sold any rough. Some chevron amethyst and some other stuff going on inside of it that's just a rock <laughs> some more chevron this whole bin is probably on material definitely uh no price on this a lot of that stuff goes for about four dollars a pound here's a different style of orthoceras um is that natural, like the host rock? I'm more familiar with seeing like the black over there. I think that's the natural. Maybe this is where they added the orthoceras and the trilobites and stuff into it. Either way, variety is key. I mean, how many orthoceras sinks can you have in your house? <clears throat> Here's some tiger's eye. This stuff also goes for about $4 a pound casually. Don't want to play in it too much. I don't know what uh, this Gem World shop is selling it for, but I just I'm saying roughly that's the average. Some random clusters and jerseys. Maybe from also from Morocco. Uh, I don't know. Hey. All right, just met a really kind gentleman who watched the channel, actually gave me a beautiful piece of London Bridge, like the London Bridge, which is pretty incredible. Uh, you don't get a piece of that every day. <laughs> he told me a great story on um, how people where he lives uh, cut some of the material and they make cabs out of it. And I guess it ended up near Habasu, perhaps. I wish I could remember exactly what he was telling me. But either way, it's still pretty awesome. So, most of the stuff is inside. It's like something with some feldspar in it. $4 a pound. You could probably find some straight up treasures in here. This is probably about 1.2 pounds. So six dollars for something like that—that's pretty incredible.
There's some selenite stuff. Is it out here because it's some of it's broken? Maybe, because there's a lot of that inside as well. Some rhyolites, some um, mahogany obsidians. Is that a pit of light back there? Mm. Oh, some more of like the amethyst. Good cutting stuff. These are cool. Heard that these have a few different names. Don't remember any of them. <laughs> and uh, here's some of the larger. Hard to even get on frame, they're so big. Get in frame, I guess. Some larger uh, amethyst pears. Don't know if you'd call these cathedrals, but like wings. People like to take pictures in front of them. You know, something like this outside of your rock shop in Montana. Get all the kids taking pictures of it. And uh, you'd be absolutely surprised by the price. A lot of people think these might cost tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, not even 3,500 bucks. You could probably easily get 70,000 for that at your rock shop or more. Obviously includes the stand. Some of them swivel, some of them don't. This one is uh, just under five G's. I like the ones with the secondary growths, the calcites inside of there. And I love the red stuff in there. I don't know exactly what is the cacaxonite and what's not. Um, maybe the fans are cacaxonite that are inside of amethyst. And somebody told me that it's actually not even cacaxonite that's an amethyst. It's just what they're calling it. I'm not exactly sure, but um, these are awesome to look at. Nice quality, too. These calcites are great. From Brazil. Not even 2,000 for that. You could easily get six grand for that. The farther away you take it from the Southwest, the more money you get. You take that sucker to Germany, <laughs> you're gonna get like 20 grand. I have a friend um, who turned me on to getting a large upright base case. And they were telling me that upright bases that come from Germany that are about 100 or 200 years old, Go for about five thousand dollars, six thousand, eight, nine, ten. But you take them over to the United States, and you can easily get like forty, fifty, sixty, one hundred thousand dollars for them. So it's kind of similar in the gem world. I heard back in the day, Fender guitars were not allowed to come. Well, American guitars weren't allowed to be sold in England, and um, so Fender guitars were really expensive in like Sweden and England and stuff during the Beatles time. Kilo bags, we busted down for us silly Americans there who don't know what a kilo is. Four dollars, that is not bad. Uh, if you're a cutter and you just want to cut a little bit of everything, these are fantastic. Now, I do believe that these folks sell online. Obviously, it's impossible to put every single thing that they um, are selling online because there's just so much stuff. They can put out a few pieces so you get a rough, you know, idea of what it is, but like, they can't list every single tower or every single sphere. There's King Kong here, hiding in its cage. This one is stunning. Doesn't look like it has a price yet, but um, love the fuzzy crystals there. Absolutely amazing. These ones are fantastic as well. Um, it's kind of cool that they're not like taking them out because you can see how they're gonna go back in. I wonder if these are lathed. Uh, are they spinning them on something on a lathe and then using like some kind of carbide tool or something? Stone doesn't feel that tough. Is that six dollars? this broken piece I don't know it could be that the um, thing is messed up it's definitely one dollar though even for something broken it's a beautiful fountain for a buck you cannot buy anything for a dollar anymore anyway 
and here is the inside. Mm -hmm. A big beautiful warehouse, very similar to the one in Tucson, but I kind of like this one a little bit better than the one in Tucson. I haven't been to the one in Phoenix. Mineral flats, $30 for the pink ones, $40 for the blue, to $45. Yellows, double yellow, $60. Every single one of these, you could definitely get more than $60 bucks for. Ask, this, ask the cashier for the show special. Let's take a look at some of these flats. These look like, these are the, um, no, these are something different. Cool quartz. What color would this one be? Ooh, don't see a logo. Obviously, don't mix the flats together. But if this was even 60 bucks, this is a great, great bargain for this flat here. Uh, this right here, you could probably get, oh, $12 for. This little cluster baby right here. Maybe the same, so definitely good profit to be made on these. Are these wolf knight, barite, borite? I'm not exactly sure. I'm not very well versed in my minerals. More of a uh, cutter than a collector, but if anyone ever wants to get some great information on minerals or just want to buy any great minerals, um, high grade collectible specimens, check out Jay from Healing Minerals on TikTok. That guy's a genius, good friend of mine. When I need help, I look up to him. Oh, it's the handles, right? No, the handles are not what are defining the price. Looks like people have been just digging through here without even caring to put the paper back on. Some vanadonite from Morocco. I don't think these are from Chem Chem in Morocco. They're from somewhere else. Again, you can watch my friend Walker Stevens go down 150 feet in the ground, belly slithering to find that material. I have no idea what this is. Pretty wild. Is this material from the Congo? I see a lot of Congolese malachite dealers selling this material alongside their malachite. Oh, beautiful fluorite back there. I love these pieces of fluorite with the pyrite on it. Really cool spread. I kind of like that you have to look through a bunch of different stuff to find this stuff, and it's kind of just, you know, everywhere, and that's fantastic and fun. You could probably get a crew of people in here just going through everything, and you wouldn't be able to do it all day. You have to come back multiple times. So even if this was 60 bucks, that is a fantastic flat right here. Looks like nobody's been digging through it. There's some predates here. And then there's some sages over here, some white California sage. The stuff that comes out of New Mexico, a lot of people don't really consider sage. They kind of call it chamisa. It's not really a smudgy thing. But those are really cool. Some of these cool bundled up with some flowers. Mm, smells great. Over here, some Palo Santo. I have a friend who uh, is making a 
giant didgeridoo and he's using Palo Santo as the mouthpiece. Ancient wisdom. First grade Palo Santo. Some lion's paw spiny oyster shell. I believe this is from Mexico. You see a lot of Hopi, Zuni, and Diné folks uh, work this material in their inlay. Sometimes you'll even see where they grind off the spines to do a, like a mosaic or intarsia. I don't really know the difference. Um, directly on the shell. Sometimes back that with silver, and that is the foundation for the pendant instead of like um, setting the stones inside of a silver bezel or something. Really cool stuff. Super popular where I live in New Mexico. Well, I'm sure amongst a lot of the Pueblos peoples and the Hopi Zuni Diné. Some cool baskets. Are these made in Mexico? Maybe. Super affordable. And that's the name of the game in this place. 10 for 60 bucks, six dollars each. Really, really cool. I wonder how fast they can make these. These are a lot of fun. A dollar fifty. Can you believe it? This gentleman must be making fifteen cents each one. Really cool. Set some more vanadinite from Morocco. Looks like a, it's quite a bit of Moroccan material. I have a great interview with a gentleman at the Denver show. Um, from Morocco, we look at some of the higher quality pieces of vanadinite and um, some of the quartz crystals that come out of there. I think when people think of Moroccan material, they think of like the orthoceras and the trilobites and stuff. And um, obviously the vanadinite and the azurite. But there's a, quite a bit of stuff that comes out of there. And um, I didn't know that the crystals so awesome out of there. Just makes sense. It's a beautiful place. Producing beautiful stuff. I mean, some of you resellers, what would you sell a piece like this for? I think vanadinite is a lead crystal. So I'll make sure to wash my hands before I eat my fried chicken. Just kidding. Stuff his finger looking good. And for every piece out here on the floor, imagine how much is in the back. Really cool. Here's some Moroccan geodes. Looks like they're already split. Oh, which is why they have the rubber band around them. These are fun. There's a lady on TikTok who cuts these, charges about 45, 60 bucks for a stone this big. She cracks them, she doesn't cut them. And uh, these are probably about a buck each, so it's a good profit for her. So why would you crack them over slicing them? Well, if you slice them, everywhere outside of the geode's vug is gonna be raw and you're gonna have to polish it or it's gonna look like a dry and scratchy stone. When you crack it, it cleaves and the cleavage is um, about the shiniest you're ever gonna get a rock. Think of a piece of glass. When you break a piece of glass, it's not all dull, like if you saw the piece of glass. And these are cool. Good qualities of these boxes. It looks like they roughly cut this and then they like nipped it uh, to make it fit. Really cool place. You know what? I hands down like this one uh, so much more than the one in Tucson. Not because of the materials, but it's just more fun. It's so tightly packed full of awesome stuff. These are neat. What are these? It's a can opener. It kind of reminds me of the, the uh, pocket can opener style that folks were bringing back from Vietnam. I think they're called a P something. Is it P70, P90 or whatever? A lot of folks carry around their fathers or their grandfathers can openers from Vietnam. I don't think I have any family that was 
in the service at that time. I don't really know a lot about my family, to tell you the truth. $38 for this piece. I don't know if that price is before or after the break. But Mr. George is an amazing dude. I'm sure he'd uh, hook it up if that was the pre-price. So for those of you that buy online, a place like this is really awesome because you can see um, a price that's closer to what the people who are selling you are paying for. Now, you know, you could always drive down here once, twice, three, ten times a year to buy directly from someone like Mr. George at one of his awesome gem world shops. But when you're buying online, you're not just buying something that somebody handpicked, which can be the difference between quality and quantity, but you're also supporting um, somebody's family, somebody's life, and a lot of people like that. Some people are after saving a few bucks. Some people don't mind uh, providing for their favorite dealers because 20 people can come in here and pick through these trilobites or not exactly, yeah, trilobites. Now, is everyone gonna get the same quality? One person can come in here and for $1.99, pick out the very best small pieces. And if they're selling that small piece for a profit, um, for as much as everyone else, isn't that one person who's buying the highest quality worth it? to buy from instead of coming down here and just scooping up stuff because you don't really know the material absolutely <clears throat> and at that point you're providing a service for the extra money that you're um, charging at your retail shop or when you sell online so it's definitely worth it <laughs> absolutely I like the smiley so so far we've been looking at a lot of Moroccan stuff trying not to film too much Moroccan stuff we show off a lot of Moroccan stuff on my channel and it was a big blessing to uh, actually film with uh, those Moroccan vendors I think I'm going to go back try to find them in Tucson I think they're at the Red Lion to ask some questions I didn't get to really cool 100 piece it's got a green sticker um, does everything here with a green sticker go for the same price? I don't know oh, over here Right here. These are size small, so 50 bucks. I wonder if if the green sticker is $50. So 50 bucks each for those. It would be really cool to um, inlay something inside of these trailer bites, and that takes a 50 cent trailer bite piece and turn it into a you know 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 dollar piece. And these are actually very easy to drill. Super easy to drill. There's some cool serpentine rollers. Kind of look like nephrite, but um, the difference between serp serpentine and a lot of nephrites when you're making mass-produced stuff like this might be just, you know, maybe as little as a dollar a pound, but people who are making those are spending, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to buy tonnage to get it down as low as possible. At um, Mr. George's Gem World in Tucson, I saw bags full of these two rollers individually, which is really cool because if you think about it, it's not just the rolling end, it's a bead, right? Double tape over oval bead, blah, blah, blah. Kind of looks pre-Columbian-ish. My grandpa used to make turquoise beads in this style. And you get like 150, 200 bucks for them. Kind of has got that cool pre-Columbian look. There's some calcified I believe that's calcite. Calcified, um... Is it calcified if it's replaced with calcite? <laughs> I don't really know. I think it is, but what is that? It's not even $6 for this beautiful calcite trilobite. Um, I like the ones with these right here. You can dig those out. Um, I think it's Hong Kong, maybe Thailand or Taiwan, where they're removing the material here, and then they're inlaying it with turquoise. That would be really easy to do on a flat lap. You just mix up some nice glue, maybe mix <coughs> the powder turquoise or the pulverized turquoise with like a metal granulated powder, like copper, or it could be, I think this would look particularly good with like a brass or a bronze. After you dig this out with your Dremel, put it in there. 
and um, after that cures, you flat lap it, and it's not going to just be beautiful turquoise chip inlay inside of these little pieces, but you can uh, get the beauty from the brass or the bronze or the silver pyrite dust. I have a friend that's selling bags of hematite glitter, so that's fantastic for inlay because it's not only going to glitter, but it, um, it's going to be nice and black so you don't see any of the glue. Some of my first chip inlay pieces, I just mix the turquoise with resins and then there would be voids and you would see like through to the back of the silver piece or something. So you kind of want to color the, the glue when you do it. Here's some cool splits. Just fossil splits, little fishy. Little fishy. Lynn said that she used to find those when she was a kid. I don't know if she was... Uh, looking for him when she was growing up in Tennessee or whatnot. These are cool. Are these um, these appetites from Morocco or Mexico? Don't really know. But they are cool. Definitely being sold. Mm, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure they're probably being sold as the flat, but. <laughs> People just abandoning other pieces in here. You know, that's kind of rude, I think. Like, oh, I decided I don't want this clear sphere here. I'm just going to put it right back in there. Or maybe some of the employees walking around and they're told to just oh, make the flat nicer or something. I don't know, but I can imagine both ways happening here. Don't know what this is. Looks really cool. It's got a few layers of this material, cardboard. Let's see, what country is this from? Is that, is that writing right there? Is it from Morocco? Looks like Arabic. Do you speak Arabic in Morocco? I'm sure on the border of Morocco, a lot of Moroccans speak Spanish. Just flat city here. Really, really cool. There's definitely many cases of just absolute supreme quality pieces hiding amongst the flat here. And it's your, it's your job to come here and find them. You know, something like this might be, oh, 30, 40, 50 bucks. But if you go through them all, you might find that one that you just know you can get 200, 300 dollars for. Tourmaline. Not exactly sure. Uh, probably Moroccan, right? Really cool. Oh, some hematite. Sweet Jim bought me a big, beautiful piece of this from the Gem World in Tucson, Arizona. Are these garnets? I think so. You know, a lot of people polish garnets. I kind of like them crusty, but you know, when you have a hundred thousand, you know, millions of them or something, you know, you gotta have some variety. So I understand why people do polish them. Is that more prenite up there? Big, beautiful, untouched flat. So Gem World is really popping off right now, you know. Um, the Pow Wow Show is what I usually come here to film. I wanted to film Gem World last year, but it's a little tough because there's so many folks here that want to be rude and try to never put anybody on camera and stuff, but I was lucky enough to have a friend who's friends with Mr. George. And uh, that's why I'm here. And the music is off, and it couldn't be any better.
but there's just so much to see here. It would take me days to go through all of the flats, and this is literally just walk in the door. Love this hematite capped quartz there. This little one's actually like even better than the big one. Very, very cool. Ooh, that right there. Big, beautiful one. Um, was there more here that people took off, like individually? I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't realize that these are supposed to be sold by the whole bin, or maybe you can't buy them individually. But I'm pretty sure they want to sell them as flats. Yeah, this one's just all mixed up, and there's definitely people who are probably mixing them up between flats. This is a great one. Nice. Sweet, colorful spread. All different kinds of stuff in here. So, somebody might think that that is a steep price, but think about it. Most of like the animals that people were selling for a buck or two were actually soapstone or alabaster. These are all really hard materials. Like, uh, I don't see a single soft material in there. If I made any one, any of these, especially one of the easier ones, like the turtles or, the, or that bear, I'd have to get 200 bucks. 150 at least, even if it's rudimentary. So, like, that is a good deal. For 12, it's two bucks each. You can get six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Look at that frog right there. Got a bloodstone frog. Thought it was Kumbaba, that's something different. Interesting package. Something like, like you can see it like a, uh, a um, oh, like a corner store or something. Here's a cool spread of all the different materials. Sorry about that. At least some of them. Agate, African turquoise. Amazonite, Amethyst, Ammonite, Aragonite, another variation, third variation, Venturine, Azurite, Barite. How do you pronounce that name? <laughs> Bismuth, Black Aragonite. It's kind of hard to see um, through the camera, but it's really nice that they do a nice spread, especially when they're showing off um, something like that and like that. Transparency is key in business. Kiwi. Never heard of that. This is like an ear gauge. The carnelian's really nice. So again, I think the main um, reason why a lot of folks come here because it funds their, well, it supplies their rock shop or their online sales or something. So you'll see a lot of packaged goods here. It, actually, mostly packaged goods. And um, the gem, gem World's prices are actually some of the very best that I have seen 
in years. It's places like Village Originals or like Norcross and other places, they are becoming a lot more expensive than they used to be. Like for instance, this package of 25 pieces of pendulums would easily be at least 55 bucks at Village Originals. Um, the prices I saw at Denver for Village Originals was at least, oh, double of what I've been seeing in the past at, in Tucson. Maybe it's because the venue is more expensive in Tucson um, than it has been in the years. I know prices are going up, but maybe everything's just going up. But for one dollar each per pendulum, that is incredible. Um, and you know, maybe they were less than half of that when you buy fifty thousand dollar packages. But really, really cool. Armando, that's interesting. Kind of. I think this is the material that the Shiva Lingams are made out of. Really wild. Very cool place. Now, like I was saying in the beginning of the video, I don't know what is exactly on their website, but stuff like this where, you know, <clears throat> it's easy for you to just see, okay, tourmaline pendulum, 25 pack, $25. This is probably the type of stuff you can expect on their website where like, you know, you kind of would want to come here to pick out your own minimal, um, uh, mineral flats. These are cool. A little bit more money with a lot more work cutting up um, all those different minerals there to make the pendulums. And they're a really good size. This is funny, I like this. And I bet you they give you the record box and everything. Is this supposed to be uh, maple leaf, right? Jamaican maple leaf. Shell turtles. Twenty-five of them for uh, ten bucks. <laughs> Those are cute. What are these? Where are these from? Monument Valley. Where is Monument Valley? It's a very like specific shot glass there. <laughs> these butterflies are uh, about ten bucks each. But they are bookmatched pairs. Just holding on to the pairs after you're... These are definitely uh, maybe vibrolapped. The sides look a little tumbled, but if they were tumbled to the same polish as the face, uh, the sides would be shiny as well. So I imagine these are vibrolapped or something very similar. So like I was saying, just holding on to the bookmatch pair, it costs a lot of money because that's a lot of, uh, you know, inventory. Making sure you don't lose a pair. They wouldn't have as um, they wouldn't be as much fun if they weren't book match pairs. So I do appreciate these. <laughs> That's a great deal. Three dollars each, or a uh, nineteen dollars a pound. So these are definitely tumbled. So I'll just rough it out on a saw, put it in a tumbler. Some of them come out fantastic. Some of them come out with a little leg like this, but some people like that variety. Um, this one here, you can see some of the scratches from the rough sawing out that didn't come out yeah. with the um, tumbling, but that's fine. You know, when you're picking out a pound's worth, you have a scale over there where they're wearing everything, it's no problem at all. These are really cool for three bucks. Beautiful agate moon. Oh, you see something like this on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Go for, I don't know, nine to fifteen dollars. This one kind of looks like it would be broken, but that's actually some kind of crystal druzy vug there that polished out and doesn't look much like a. Uh, doesn't look much like a um, 
bug anymore. It kind of looks like a fracture, but that is pretty, pretty natural. All right, finally made it to the other side of the room. I mean, other side of the shelf. A lot of these birds you might have seen at the uh, other gem world. These are from Peru, I believe. During the Denver Gem Show, I spoke with a gentleman who was telling me the story of these, and that it kind of started off with one family when these were really being produced maybe 40, 50 years ago. <clears throat> and since then, um, the kids took over, and it's kind of a family business. But uh, obviously, they're teaching other people as well. I wonder if this is the size it's supposed to be, or was this one big thing that broke? Even broken, that's still really cool, if it is broken. Kind of spider web crab looking material, probably from Morocco, I don't know. Maybe it's probably from Peru, actually, some kind of serpentine. But yeah, a uh, couple families supporting each other, and you would think that one person would be making this one piece, especially since they all kind of look like if they made this at the same time for the same person. However, the gentleman who I interviewed about these beautiful birds that you see coming out of Brazil and out of Peru was telling me that um, all of these different stones here are worked individually, then put together, and then shaped into the birds. So there's a bunch of different hands, a bunch of different artisans working on any of these one birds at any time. And that's just the way you have to do things to do things fast, especially when you're selling things for, um, you know, six bucks each. Or five dollars and fifty cents each. This guy right here, he reminds me of the one, the pebble and the penguin penguin. They're all be beautiful, but, uh, <laughs> This one here in particular reminds me of the main character. What an incredible deal for six bucks, seven bucks. If I made that, I would need 350. No, I would need like like a 500 bucks to make that. These are definitely made in Peru. These are the type of um, soapstone creatures that I was talking about that you would see um, closer to a buck where those other ones over there, which were probably made in Hong Kong, uh, are much harder stone, really, really, a lot more difficult to cut than um, the soapstone ones, which are actually polished with some kind of clear coat. Wow, this pyrite bear for three bucks? I might have to buy that. It's just so heavy and dense and substantial for three dollars. If my grandma is in here, I'm gonna make sure that she puts it in her basket. That is really, really cool for three dollars. Holy smokes. Oh, my hand smells like pie right now. Here's some cool polychrome, I think. This is what this material is. You know, it could be a bear. It could be a hornless buffalo. Uh, it could be many different things. This one must be a polar bear, right? So, um, Gem World doesn't just sell stuff that supplies to different dealers and stuff like gems and stuff. They also sell showcases, Riker boxes, lighting, uh, bags, all kinds of displays. I like these. If you have a necklace that you want to show off um, that you're selling with the... that you're selling with the um, chain, those are good. You can put a few cabochons in these. I remember when these first came out on the scene, people were selling something like this for like five or six bucks. And now it's really good to see that they're being made by many different manufacturers for really, really affordable prices. Um, so cheap that you can give them away with pieces that you sell. I like the smaller ones. Uh, I don't often give these away when I sell a piece. Um, I mean, I just, I don't, I like them. I don't want to, I should, <laughs> I should, because it'll protect it a bit. So you can see here, the 9 by 9s are 75 each, or 10 for 6 bucks, making it $60 each. Really cool. Let's see this. Oh, I thought this was advertising um, a camera. These are strobe lights for that late night after party at your booth. 
There's some more cathedrals and this is some kind of like stuff that people are calling like rose amethyst or something, but I think it's kind of just like the host rock that comes off of some of the amethyst from Uruguay and Brazil. Don't know too much about it. Perhaps it's some kind of completely different material, but really, really affordable. Some people are really into it. Maybe it's uh, flesh from an ancient creature, blood fossil. This bear here, all of these bears are beautiful, but this one's got some character to it. He wants to, uh, he wants to um, come home. Five dollars. I think he wants to come home with me. He looks a little lonely. He just doesn't fit in with his bear buddies. The black sheep with the bear of the bear box. And this guy here, this fox, he thinks he's a bear because he was raised by bears. What a weird tail. Maybe it's a nine-tailed fox. And they're all just bunched up together. With short legs. <laughs> really cool. These are neat. Two of them for three. Oh, cool. Three bucks for both of those. Not bad. I had a uh, YouTube subscriber send me some opals, some boulder and some black inside one of these boxes. Here is a yellowed amethyst pair, 3260. I don't think that the heat treating of the amethyst affects the price in any way. Like some people might think that it might become more affordable. Not really, and again, it's one of those cases where, you know, if there's a hundred thousand different amethyst cathedral or wings or whatever floating around the workshop, you want some variety, which is why you would heat treat um, something so big and so beautiful sometimes. You can only have so much amethyst, and then you heat treat it to turn it into a simulated citrine. Still cool. People still appreciate it, still love it. Looks like there's a lot of Brazilian stuff over here. Really cool. Some titanium amethyst. Are they plating it with titanium? Ooh, that's some cool play going on there. So when I was filming the, uh, filming the Gem World video in Tucson, I think I filmed for like an hour and forgot to even push play on the camera. So this here, is obviously, it's mate. I like to buy the nodules of these uncut, much like the um, geode slicing online. It's fun to slice these online and you pay a flat price and you slice them for them and they get what they get. Sometimes you get something incredible. Sometimes you get something with a little bit less material, equally as incredible, just a little bit different variation. But unlike the slicing of geodes live where you would have to spend sometimes a good 20 minutes to get an impeccable polish on the geode, these are extremely easy to polish. So you take the raw nodule, you slice it with a, with a blade, perhaps a continuous blade, so it's a nice um, smooth cut, <clears throat> maybe with a vise even, so it's nice and straight. Take it to the flat lap, it's two or three minutes tops, and this is polished, and you can charge a little bit extra for the polish. You charge one flat price for the actual um, septarian nodule itself. And then uh, you can, you know, slice it for free, or they can just buy it. And then you can offer to polish it for an additional price. You can have one person doing the camera work, one person doing the slicing, one person doing the polishing. Have a nice little team. Everybody makes out. Everybody's happy. And you can, and you can charge an affordable price, especially when you get it from somewhere awesome like Gem World. Here. It's a big store. Is that my grandma over there? No, it's not my grandma. Everyone looks like my grandma here. <laughs> 42 bucks for something like this. Fantastic piece of calcite. Beautiful. 
Uh, you can definitely get $200 for something like that online. Here's some apophyllites. Are these from India? Are all apophyllites zeolites? Are all zeolites apophyllites, but not all apophyllites are zeolites? Don't really know. 30% off all the mirrors. These Brazilian slices. My aunt um, yeah, has a beautiful fun. house in Florida. It was funny, on her wall, she has a, like a picture frame, three of these. I wonder what they were charging for the picture frame at whatever kind of home decor place that she bought that. Just putting them in a picture frame. Are they, are they getting like 400 bucks, 300 bucks for something like that? There's a lot you can do with these. Some people don't really like these because these are dyed. However, I do have a good friend named Everybody Rocks. Make sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel. And if you ever want to get rid of the color in these, you can leave these out in the sun. And it will um, strip the color from them so you can have the original gray or slightly brown colors of these. So um, don't frown upon the dyed Brazilian agate slices. If you ever want to get rid of the color, you can get rid of the color. You can leave them out in the sun and it will bleach the color right out of them if you're more interested in a natural looking color. This one's beautiful. This is the queen of the rodeo here with the juicy. Oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, we've got a bookmarker, I think, we're, we're that similar. That is awesome. Oh, I like this crusty coated one here. These smokies are awesome. Are they irradiated to turn black? Did they just take the regular quartz? You collect them. You collect them. I beg your pardon? You collect them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like to work them a little bit more than collecting them. In fact, my grandma will kill me if I collected everything I wanted. Oh, <laughs> uh, which ones? Uh, are you talking about the bookmarks? What? You know, I do, I do like those, but I don't like as much that they're dyed. But you can actually get rid of the color by leaving them in the sun, and it goes back to the browns and the grays. But I think oh. they're beautiful. So they've colored these? Yes, ma'am. Oh, see, I just learned something. Look at yeah. that. Oh, how did they do any of this stuff? Oh, <laughs> they colored it. But um, you can always them. get rid of it. Like if put it out in the sun and let it start. See oh. my thumb there? Yeah. Oh good. my god. <clears throat> but it's yeah. totally worth it, every single penny. And you know, I go to the Tucson show every year. And this store has yes. better prices than ninety nine percent of the places I see in Tucson. Mr. George is doing a great service yeah. to all of us. We, uh, we come to Quartzsite every, every year. Every year we're in here. We didn't bring our camper this year, so we're just kinda staying at a hotel for a couple of days. Oh nice. <laughs> Hotels have gone up a lot this year, huh? Every year, it's because it's coming it? so. I'm in Blythe. We oh yeah, we're in too. We brand. won't eat, we, we won't stay at a hotel. Yeah, brand too. new, uh, Best Western. Oh, nice. Do you go to Blythe every year? No, we go oh. come here to Portland oh. every year. But the campgrounds we uh, used to stay at uh, got bought out. The campgrounds, is that where the fairground is or is that different? Oh, here. Was right. it the B-52 place, or is it somewhere different? No, oh, it used to call uh, Rice Ranch. Oh, nice. And now it's, they bought it out. It's, it's, it's all up, and locked. they're redoing it. Oh, they're my. Gonna, it's going to be a money maker. Well, you just taught me something. I'm glad I talked to you. Oh, yeah, anytime. They're definitely worth it. Just if you ever wanted the natural color, you can leave it out in the sun. Where do you where do you folks stay when you're not in Quartzite? Ontario this morning. Oh, there should be enough sun over there. Yeah. Do you folks ever go down to... Uh, isn't that where the Thunder Bay Amethyst is? Um, why, you know these things, on, they got sitting on the ground all over the place? Yeah. Why did they paint the backside of it? So, there's a few theories. One of them is that because they're t they lived, they had to remove it from this big host rock, maybe that it's going to crumble if you don't do something to it. But sometimes you will see the back polished. So I'm not sure about the whole crumbling thing. Mm -hmm. But I did see in Tucson once a, gem a gentleman from Brazil putting these strips of um, 
like fiber tape before he painted it. Mm-hmm. So maybe it is to stabilize it. Um, sometimes it's a what some people would say an ugly crusty green. Like that green is natural right there. Yes. And some people think it's unappealing. And sometimes it can be sharp. So maybe the black is to stabilize. Maybe it's just to make it look more consistent. Yeah. Um, I, I I just I see them all the time, always painted black, and I just. Oh, I hear that. But if you if you look, let's see if we can find one. Sometimes they polish the backs, and and it's a beautiful color of greens and grays. Mm-hmm. But that's got to be ten times more work. You know, unfortunately, when you're getting paid seven dollars a day, who might, who go ahead and do it? But you know how it is. <laughs> I was across the street yesterday, and uh, guy had tables full of this kind of stuff. He, and I saw something, and it looked like it was uh, kind of like a red. And I said, that's been painted on. Interesting. What did he say? He didn't say anything. I did, <laughs> and I used to, he had quite a few of them. I said, you know, that's been painted on. Yeah, and... Um, I can just... They, I, I, I just picked it out, so... I don't know, like you said, that everything you, you see of, the, of this type of stone... It's all painted black on the back side. Like this one's natural. Yeah. But but what I think this might be, see, I was like, this might have been a broken one of those. Yes. A, a piece and of uh, that. right, because there's no need to paint these ones black. And this one probably wasn't. It's, this is it's sawed there, so this one yeah. came from the slicing of those ones, yeah. and they didn't have to paint it, you know. But um, I'm sure you're right on that one. So you know, I d- I did see one cracking once, and they were. The jump, the Brazilian gentleman who's putting those strips, because he said it because it was cracking. So maybe it's a bit of both, and it just became a standard. And now the, the ones that aren't cracking, they just paint it black because people are used to seeing it black. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you folks have a great day. Thank you. Let's see if we can find a polished back one, like that. That's natural, incredible, but um. Yeah, sometimes. This is cool. Three dollars and fifty cents. Is this broken? Was this just straight up tubes? That is such an affordable price for such an amazing thing. Um, these glasses are cool. These are probably a buck. What I have been doing with without any success, and I will share it with you folks. I was kind of keeping it to myself is there are eyeglass companies overseas that will make you eyeglasses um, very affordably. They have these just machines. They make the lenses really cheap. I wanted to send um, solid materials like um, carnelian without any banding in it or smoky quartz and have them make um, gemstone sunglasses out of, you know, real, not real quartz, but smoky quartz or maybe rose quartz and put them into high quality glasses. Now, that will happen. There's no doubt about it. It's probably happening right now, but it's eventually going to be mass produced like something like these with smoky quartz inside of the sunglasses or rose quartz or carnelian. It's going to eventually have various striations or banding that are going to be a little bit hard to see through when you um, put them on your face. But there is a small window, and that window is now, to put them into something high quality like Ray-Bans or Spies or something like, or even like something silly like... um, Oh, what do they call it? Like Pit Viper or something, you know. Um, those will become less desirable when they get start getting mass produced. And here's the thing. Most people are going to want to buy a $15 pair of smoky quartz glasses instead of buying a um, $200 pair. But if anyone's interested, find out who you can get to send, uh, who you can send slabs of smoky quartz to or whatever material you want, amethyst, anything, to make you those glasses and to pop them into the frames for you. And you will make a lot of money. And if anybody does do that from this video, send me a pair, please. Send me one, send me a rose quartz one for my grandma, and I'll take a nice smoky quartz pair of, uh... (laughs) I want some aviators. You know what? No, I want, I'll mail you... Or you know, if you're making all the money, email me a really high-quality citrine set of aviators. 
That's what I want. Yeah. That's the natural color. This is cool. I like all those those little things going on. Things. Here's a beautiful piece of lapidolite with rubellite and even some tourmalines popping through the sides there. This is 02, so that's not the price. That's like identifying mark. So you take it up there, they can tell you the price. Sometimes they do it with colors. Sometimes they do it with numbers. This is a great one. It's probably like two, three dollars tops. Easily get 20 bucks for something this beautiful. Um, oh. It kind of looks like this is repolished, but it kind of doesn't. Like, it's tough to tell. It might be repolished. Even if it is, it's still beautiful. Here are some apophyllite chunks. It looks like quartz, but it's not. Actually, yeah, it's quartz. <laughs> no, it definitely is. I was pretty sure it was apophyllite, but that's a cool little hand blade looking thing there for whatever the price. Um, so I guess I should mention that this is open to the public. You don't need a wholesale ID to shop here or anything like you would at some of the other stores or at any other booths like at Tucson or any of the larger gym shows that have things of a similar quality for a similar price. Some weird kyanite stuff. I have a cool story about cutting kyanite. I had a really good friend who uh, supported my YouTube channel and supported me as an artist. She gave me a big box of uh, kyanite and uh, she let me cut as much of the material as I wanted to make pendants, polish it, and drill it to make some pendants. And I had to return the box even though it was good money relatively fast. Um, <clears throat> something in the kyanite was making my wheels scream. So we all know this material is relatively soft, but something in there was really, really, really hard and it was making my wheels scream. Also, little needles were flying off, not just into my eyes, but into my face. So a set of goggles wasn't even gonna work. I was gonna need a full blown face shield. And at that point I'm like, okay, don't really wanna cut any more of this stuff. So these are Brazilian. I don't know if they're irradiated. And what I mean by irradiated is they can irradiate clear quartz to turn it black. A good identifier for that is when um, it's like pitch black like that. A lot of smoky quartz is a little bit fainter, especially at um, lower prices. I love it. Uh, something to think about is supposedly there is no such thing as smoky quartz from Arkansas. If you ever see somebody selling Arkansas quartz and it's smoky, it's irradiated. Now, I hear that they can change, we all know we can. they can change um, amethyst yellow, but can you, so I hear you can turn it green too, supposedly. Is that also an irradiation process like the black? I'm not sure, somebody let me down, know down in the comment section, please, if you don't mind me asking. This is a beauty here. I love this place. These hearts are awesome. 62, is that the dollars? Is that how much? Or is it sold by weight? 159. It says 44. Which one is the price? What's going on here? At $159, it's still really good. You can easily get 300 bucks for that. Personally, I try not to double my money. When I make things, I try to get at least three times. Is keystoning double or is keystoning triple? I think my grandma told me it was triple. $16 for a beautiful flame. 
really, really cool polychrome jaspers. Now we're getting into this flamey spheres, towers, freeform territory, the hearts. Hearts are cool. Obviously, the crotch of the heart is the hardest part. Um, so they're making these and they're throwing them into the tumbler, which is why they're not perfectly symmetrical. But that's totally fine. Is anybody's heart perfectly symmetrical? What I think we're going to do so we can get um, across a little bit faster the store, I'm going to go check up on my grandma and uh, start on the other side of the store and make my way back over here after maybe this next aisle. We're gonna go through it all, baby. At least as long as my phone is charged. Look at that. Cool sphere, these are handmade. Most likely not on a sphering machine or even a rotundal, like literally hand sphered and roughly shaped as round as possible. These are $2 each. Um, yeah, that is wildly cheap for anything even roughly circular. That is really cool. These are aragonite. Here's some eggs. Some of them have a flat side there, so they stand. These are also two bucks each. Really good price. This is actually a calcite, I believe, or an aragonite. Some other materials that are eggish. Almost looks like the black variation of Picasso, but definitely isn't. Discounted, $8 for these. Uh, this is the Rhyolite tile. I mean, it's definitely not um, overpriced, that's for sure, for what it is, but am I wrong? Is this like a cigarette case or something? I'm just not seeing it. No, I think it is just a really nice, might be a Jasper and not a Rhyolite, not too sure. Kind of looks like a Rhyolite. So, it's Kumbaba, or Serpentine Tower. $8 a pound. Looks like they've been wiped out, but there's a lot more over there. Anyway, I'm gonna go check up on Lenny, and then I will be back on the other side of the storm. These shinier ones are definitely on a sphering machine of some kind. Now, overseas, you won't see folks using like Highland Park, Diamond Pacific style sphering machines. You actually rotate these on a rotundal. So instead of having these in like two or three different cups spinning like a traditional sphering machine, they'll actually put this on a cylinder from the bottom and they'll spin it and they'll hold a circular disc with grit and run that around the sphering machine around the sphere to make well the stone to make a sphere it's a lot more affordable that way i think people here in the united states should learn something from those manufacturers and you can make your own spring machine at home using a lot of tools that you would um similar to the folks who do like surface polishing on larger like <clears throat> petrified woods you can cut up those flat angle grinder diamond discs put it on top of that with your hand and sphere it while you have it spinning so all you have to do is pretty much found out a way to spin a pvc or metal cylinder fast and true and you hold the grid on top and in fact i even seen videos of when they do the final polishing they're using old pairs of jeans to hold the um the abrasive or the compound or the paste or whatever they're using. Um, regardless, $8 a pound. That is very impressive for the sphering. But um, it, it, these ones are perfectly sphered. These are done on a rotundal or some kind of sphering machine. This one is not, for sure. But um, these aragonites are not either, but absolutely impressive. I want to make one of those or have somebody make one of those for me. There is a gentleman at the Denver show miners co-op the miners co-op in tucson and here at the powwow who makes his own sphering machines out of washer machine motors and pvc 
And uh, he's very open about sharing the information on how to make those and stuff. He's a really cool guy, great sphere. He's been doing some really cool and unique spheres that not a lot of other people have been making, such as like Surfite or like Composites, uh, Fordite spheres. We'll go talk to him sometime while we're here. 85 bucks for this beautiful Orthoceris Matrix spiral thing. <laughs> Like a horn. How do I look? A horn. <laughs> maybe on this side. Or maybe right out of my head. Like that. <laughs> this is kind of odd to see. Oh, I understand now because they're real paintings. Somebody. It's not a, uh, it's not a copy, like a print, or what do they call high quality prints? Uh, cliche? Not cliche, well, <laughs> Re oh, what is it called? Gicle? It's high quality print, but this is just some awesome speed painter just dishing these suckers out somewhere. That is pretty cool. These, a little bit more free form. Uh, I mean, like, and like, what is art worth if somebody made this in manhattan what are they gonna get twenty thousand dollars for it where if someone's making this let's say in brazil philippines mexico and they're selling it mass on mass for um you know five or six bucks each or less and then people can sell them for 20 30 and people would buy that you could buy that and frame it Put it in your gallery in Santa Fe, New Mexico and get 5,000 bucks, hands down. You could also be sketchy and buy that and put a signature on it and say that your grandma painted it and you want $2,000 for it, you know. It, it's just really cool. Just goes to show how absolutely, undeniably talented folks are around the world making these things nonstop, just fast dishing out thousands and thousands of these a week. Absolutely impressive and somewhat actually kind of saddening. Whoever made that deserves everything in the world for their art. <clears throat> and it really just comes down to where and when you were born, right? I tell people all the time, you know, there's such a big disconnection from miners, cutters, and dealers. Here in America, we can be, we can work at Walmart. And then you can come to a place like this on your days off, buy a bunch of stuff and be a straight up gem dealer, make clearing, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Where unfortunately a lot of folks around the world, you know, the miners don't get to do the cutting. The cuttings don't know them. The cutters don't often know very much about the miners and know even less about the dealers. And the dealers know less about both of those folks. Um, you know, that's why a lot of people from, let's say... Well, let's just say different countries. You know, they're dealing and they're wearing suits and ties and selling stuff because um, that's what their family did and their family's family did. And uh, almost like a caste system in a way. But I will end there with that conversation. <laughs> with that topic. I have a lot of respect for... Um, every single person who've ever touched every one of these stones. A lot of these might be 30, 40, 50. No, not 50. Really, late 80s at the very most. Most likely early 2000s and maybe a little bit of 90s, but a lot of respect. Like all of this lavender right here definitely cut maybe the last five, six years. Even if it's been sitting around in warehouses for a long time. <clears throat> and a lot of these materials... Because of the internet, because of the larger gem shows, have actually become um, a lot more affordable than getting more expensive. You would think, oh, I'm going to buy this Labradorite, you know, freeform here for five bucks, and in 50 years it's going to be worth more. Probably not. In the 80s and 90s, Labradorite, something like this, could have easily have gone for eighty, ninety dollars before the internet, before all the, before everyone doing the scene. My friend Sprite would tell me that freeform labradorites were very expensive. You know, something maybe twice as big as that could go for a thousand dollars. But because of the transparency due to the internet, and because of the, um, just the popularity, more of it's being mined than ever. 
Now, the quality may be different. And I've, I've experienced that a lot, especially with, like, hearts and um, freeforms and stuff. When I was doing Grandma Jean's sale, there was a tiger's eye heart that was absolutely flawless. And maybe to make it that tiger's eye heart more affordable, they didn't have to sacrifice on the quality of the material, but the quality of the craftsmanship. Because, you know, everything's going to get more expensive. And if they want to maintain the same price, then um, something's got to give. Kind of like a Subway sandwich. It was probably awesome in the 90s. <laughs> now it's just a terrible fast food. Um, fast food <laughs> turkey sandwich, you know? Anyway. Here's a bunch of selenite goodies. It's like a lot of these are about five bucks each. Are these laser? They have to be laser. I don't think they're like the CNC where they're like doing any grinding. I could be wrong. I imagine laser would just be so much easier, especially for those fine lines. I love these. Um, I'm not a big selenite person. This uh, heart was made by hand for sure. Really, actually quite symmetrical, but it's a soft material. So not too hard. Phases of the moon. So if you're watching this part before like another part of the video, I might be jumping around um, from different times of me filming in different places so it's a little bit more um, entertaining for you folks because I know I'm spending a lot of time in one place but there's just so much to talk about. I love talking about it and I'm so blessed by uh, Mr. George to even be here allowed to film this. A lot of places like this, you know, people don't want people filming because the camera can intimidate some people and such but um, thank you to my beloved friends Full and MT for making this happen. And um, if this ends up being the beginning of the video, know that this wasn't the beginning of the video. <laughs> and I might show what I was looking at in the beginning some times later, but I don't think a lot of you folks are really going to care about that. $150 for 100 piece soda light hearts. Absolutely amazing deal. You can get, oh, six, seven, eight dollars for these each all day long. You drill a hole in it, you make fashion up some kind of necklace, you can get 15, 20 bucks for these all day long really cool I do prefer the flat hearts when I incorporate them into jewelry over the puffy hearts but I kind of don't really work with too much mass produced stuff anymore I don't know if there's anything wrong with that I just I could consider myself an artist and not a reseller these are cool these um, a little bit more puffy than the flatter ones but that's still a nice good uh, size and width and you can actually take a lot of this mass produced material um, that might be slightly less quality than what someone you know who's taking more time could make and you can actually enhance it for instance this piece of mahogany obsidian heart you could easily take to uh cerium oxide on leather wheel and just get a glass polish on this heart here so if you're buying these for $1.50, you can increase the price easily by just taking them to a buffing wheel, taking them to whatever kind of compound or whatever kind of um, oxide they desire and get a lot more money for them. It's taking about, four, I don't know, 15, 16 seconds to take that to a leather oxide wheel and you just get a water polish on that. People are going to want to buy you from you for that 16 seconds of extra time um, because of your quality. And that little bit that you uh, put in extra that others might not even think about or know how to do. And at the end, isn't that what everyone's paying for anyway? Paying, when they do resells and stuff, they're paying for something that they would probably have a harder time finding more affordably, faster, at a better quality. That goes for all of this kind of stuff. Anyway, here are the hearts and things. Looks like all of the material here is bagged. 150 piece for one, 100 piece for 150 dollars. The pyrite spheres from Peru 
are fantastic. I do believe these are done on something similar to like a rotunda or a sphering machine because they are a little bit more round. You know, spheres are such odd sacred geometry. You can just hold it in your hand and you know that it is pretty perfect. <clears throat> you also know when it's not. Some smaller quartz crystals sold by the piece. Here's a just a fun bag here. What is that? One, two, three, four. Looks like a 20 piece for $20. That is incredible. You can sell that for 100 bucks all day long. All day long. It's your starter kit. My good friend was making, um, oh, she was making uh, advent calendars. I love the frosty vug in there. It looks so good. The, no, it's not the top. It's dusted with some kind of stinky dust. I love it. Love the stinky box dust. These pirate towers are actually super cool. Super duper cool. And I didn't forget about that, that pirate bear over there. I'm coming back for you, baby. <laughs> These are really, really, really cool. I don't think I've seen too many pyrite towers for sale. $25 a pound, so it's almost $25 a piece. Everybody loves the pointy ones, right? So, most towers are not, you know, the same shape as a lot of obelisks, like this, for instance. This, you would consider a tower. Not a repolish point, but a tower. What is that six-sided? Obelisks is its own. Style of sacred geometry, four-sided piece here. So, they're different. Worth advertising. You can have a thousand towers, but do you have a thousand obelisks? There was a reason why they made structures in this shape all around the world. Is it energy devices? Is it an organ generating device? It's for some kind of ancient, lost, and or hidden technology stripped from you at birth that would allow you to heal yourself and to live a lot longer than the 125 years that uh, popular religious texts promise you at most. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But what do I know? Just a kid shining rocks in his grandma's garage looking at dollar Serpentine eggs. <laughs> Food for thought, though, right? Ten bucks, totally worth it. If I bought them, I would repolish them. Like, um, these Jaspers, definitely cerium oxide, perhaps these felspar aluminum oxide. And that's just the difference between selling, you know, quality and quantity. Everybody's selling these, but if you take 15 seconds, hit it on the leather and cerium oxide wheel, you get a better polish than anybody else, and everyone's going to want to buy from you. It doesn't take too much effort. At least that's the type of people I'd want to buy from. Oh, this one right here. This one. That is funny. Bag of, these are not gold still, I'm just reusing the box here. This is some kind of, I guess some people would even consider it like a low quality sunstone or moonstone. Just some flashy felspar looking thing. Pretty cool for the price. This one is actually pretty perfect for $7. And a little flat spot right there, but that's some real good. Awesome stuff. These are cool. Um, I made a video recently on Lucky Scoops and what people think about them. Everyone was asking, hey, Lapidary Dave, what are your thoughts on Lucky Scoops? I really want to know. And I think I surprised a lot of people by telling them that I absolutely love it. You know, a lot of people say, oh, 
it's stepping on my toes. I can't sell anything because of Lucky Scoop. I'm losing my customers. Let me tell you something. You're, you're never losing your customers. You're taking them from them. You know, folks overseas who are doing those Lucky Scoop things are the people who are manufacturing this style of stuff. So if you're losing your living because you're selling this kind of stuff, then perhaps you should rethink about what you're selling and rethink your clientele. There's always going to be somebody who wants, you know, more affordable entry-level stuff, and that's totally awesome. But maybe you should consider selling, you know, unique regional materials instead of, um, you know, the similar stuff that they're selling in Lucky Scoops. And I think a lot of people disagree with me saying, oh, you know, that they're invading on our market, blah, 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 blah. In my opinion, they're spending... The same amount of money that you could to buy the rough. They're just being smarter and working harder by getting the material worked somewhere more affordably. They are coming up with the designs. They are the ones who are cutting all of this stuff. If anything, you're stepping on their toes. So, yeah. That's my thoughts on that. I don't see anything wrong with the Lucky Scoop stuff. If anything, it's bringing a lot of people into the scene at an affordable price. You know, I I have met dozens of people on my YouTube channel <clears throat> who um, tell me that, um, you know, they got into the scene because of Lucky Scoops and now they're buying higher end stuff. A lot of which were buying from people like me and my good friend Jay from Healing Minerals and some other people that I work for here and there or... It's just, it's good for the scene. If you don't like it, you know, you gotta, you know, rethink your business. I don't think anyone should ever get comfortable just selling the same thing to the same people all the time. You should always be trying to better your business because one day there's going to be someone coming in there selling something higher quality for a better price. And if you're unprepared for that, then you were never really prepared for the for that particular industry. Celestite, 30, Celestite Flats, $3.99 a pound. I don't know this, oh, it must be these right here. It's really affordable. This stuff's from Peru, right? Madagascar. Yep. Grandma Jean has some really nice eggs that went to our good friend Ricky. Y'all know Ricky, one of a mine, really good man. There's some raw pieces too. 650 a pound of those humatoid quartz are seven obviously it's um the variation of price comes from the variation in materials some materials cost more per pound than others you know you go to somebody like oh mplc or gem world usa and you're buying rough let's say, rose quartz for $2 a pound, you can get that closer to 50 cents if you're buying 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 tons. But um, sometimes you can't, you can't take everything down to that price, that's for sure. No idea what this is. There's some nice chatoyants in there, though. This is a moonstone, so I want some black feldspar. This view is Like that vibe right there. Again, definitely worked on some kind of rotundal or sphering machine. Not just hand done like the aragonites over there. Polished with cerium oxide. I can see the oxide inside of the cracks there. Really cool. I love that. All those black spots inside of the juicy there. These smokies are awesome. Again, polished with cerium oxide. Uh, quartz, obsidians, jaspers, agates, cerium oxide, aluminum oxide for stuff like, you know, your nephrites and your jadeites. Stuff like this perhaps would be a little bit better with paste or tin. Pretty cool. Is this silicon? No, too heavy. Oh, 
at that little sweetie here. Dirty girl, but beautiful. You know, I'm always online looking up the new machines that are coming out. For instance, the $230 faceting machine being sold by Vivor. I cannot wait to review that. I'm going to try to get them to send it to me for free. Um, but I don't see a lot of sphering machines coming from China. You see a lot of um, bead milling machines, and perhaps they're the same technology, just instead of making beads, they're making spheres. I mean, what is a sphere besides a giant round bead, right? The way they do it with the beading is, <clears throat> first, they're taking the material, cutting it into a block, cutting that into slabs. They're using a gang saw. They call it a gang saw because it's a saw that has a bunch of blades together. And they're slicing that into a bunch of slabs at once that are the same thickness. And they cut it the other way and you end up with cubes. From there, you use the gem chamfering machines which take the cubes and knock off the corners. There's a whole machine dedicated to knocking off corners. Why would you use a machine to knock off corners instead of just um, taking the time or paying somebody to just hit those corners on a wheel? Well, because you want just enough of those corners off of the cubes that you just made. And all the cubes are the same size, so all of the corners, you want them off of the same size because here's the thing. In any given batch of the spheres that you're making, or excuse me, the um, beads that you're making, if you leave it time to grind, it's gonna be, the batch is usually gonna be around the same size as the very smallest piece that you are milling. So say you're milling a thousand beads, by the time you get everything perfectly circular, all of those beads are going to be the same size as the smallest bead because it's taking time and grinding all the material away um, to the smallest bead before all of the beads start spinning. And um, yeah, so there's $10,000 machines just to take the corners off of cubes um, during the milling process. And from there, then it goes into a sphering thing where it's rolling all around those um, cubes that you chamfered off and now they're spinning and then from there you throw it in a tumbler from there you're using an ultrasonic drilling machine stuff like the gunther um, from gunther drilling systems which is a fantastic and my most beloved drilling system is just too costly not economical enough to drill hundreds of thousands of beads a week or a month so, um, <clears throat> you're going to want to do it sonically. And then, uh, yeah, so my point is, before I went on my ADHD rant, is that I wonder, since I don't see a lot of Chinese fearing machines, and I'm always looking on Alibaba, DHgate, and all of these things, because I would love to have a bead milling factory but that's a topic for another time. This this one's really cool. Um, if I'm not seeing sphering machines because there's just large machines that produce spheres similarly to the way they produce the beads with those four, three or four different machines doing those three or four different things. This little twin here is awesome. And so the reason why I think making beads in America is just not worth it, or at least on a very small scale at home, is because strands of beads can just be had so affordably. It's a beautiful crusty malachite thing right there. You know, I was buying strands of carnelian beads for a dollar in... Um, in Tucson at the Gem Mall or what do they call it? Gem Mall or Holodome, the wholesale show. And how much were those people paying for it? You know, 55 cents, 65 cents. I didn't have to buy more than one strand to get it for a dollar. So how much were they paying for it, you know? And so, like, what are you going to mill as an American in your bead-making workshop that's going to be worth or worth as much or better quality than folks were making it overseas? It's just kind of not practical. I have a very small milling machine that was given to me by Sweet Jim before he passed away. And, um, and what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to avoid the casual. 
I'm not gonna waste uh, my time cutting high quality. Well, I'm not gonna waste my time cutting the casual carnelian, amethyst, rose quartz, because I'm never gonna be able to compete with that price of folks doing it on larger machines faster. I'm not, I'm going to, I am going to avoid the expensive stuff. Why would I mill clover light? Why would I mill suja light and turquoise? You can lose 80% of the material to get a bead. What I'm gonna do is the regional. I'm going to sphere out things like Fordite and um, let's say uh, Lake Superior Agate. People from Michigan are going to love that. I can sphere out, oh, different shells. How often do you see perfectly round shell beads? You see a lot of Hishi style, but if you do, th oh, I'm going to sphere out for sure the lapidolite that comes from Taos. It's in abundance. It's easy to work. Um, you can buy a lapidolite strand of beads for one or two dollars and I could sell a graduated strand of lapidolite beads in Taos for $300, $400, $500 dollars because people are going to want to buy high quality things from the places that they're visiting. So there is, there is some reason to mill, but um, the casual's not really worth it. Beautiful piece of hematite. Uh, I think everybody in the rock world has met those people that go around the desert thinking that everything you pick up is a meteorite. It's so funny. I've met like five or six of those people in my day. And uh, on my YouTube channel, I used to offer an identification, like to help identify. And it's just absolutely, I had to stop that because I'm getting hundreds of people a day asking me what their entire rock collection is. And uh, nowadays I send them to... Gem and Mineral Identification Group on Facebook. There's a few of them. Rock. I think it's Rock and Gem and Rock Identification or something. There's a bunch of them. I love these here. These are awesome. These, uh... These are really cool color. Almost like Libyan glass colored yellow. But, um, and I would also just get those people who are just show me all these rocks. Is this a meteorite? Is this a meteorite? I'm like, I don't think so. You should just send it away to get tested. And I get a feeling that they're thinking that, oh, he just doesn't want to tell me because he knows I have a meteorite. My gosh, it's definitely something that a lot of us have experienced in the gem world. Uh, the people who think that they're finding meteorites all of the time. Surrounded by meteorites. It crashed right in my backyard where I found it so funny let's do the research maybe buy some meteorite and uh, figure it out and also um, it doesn't always have to be expensive to send things away for analysis for instance I believe if you're a resident of New Mexico you can ship away rocks for 50 bucks to be to go through um, analysis at the Socorro University New Mexico or the Scientific University of New Mexico. Don't remember what it's called. So it's not too much money. If it's only 50 bucks for New Mexicans, even if it was doubled, it's still worth it. Hey Lenny, I was looking for you. You find fun things? What do you got going on? What are these made out of? Selenite. Is that the stuff that clears your crystals? Yeah, it cleanses the energy, right? Yeah. Supposedly. I mean, that's what, what is this? What do you think it is? A rock. It looks like it came from outside in the driveway. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice one. What's it's these? nice. It is cute. What are they? It's some kind of brown jasper. Yes. Where'd you find this? Down by the way. Oh, I want you to show me. This is a uh, Moroccan septaria nodule. And these are really it? fun to slice open live because uh -huh. they're full of spiderweb white stuff Ooh. inside. It's really cool. Do we want to do that? I just want to see them. Okay. So you're busy here right now? Oh, not too busy. I was actually going to start on the other side. Yeah, Over there. And start working my way this way. We should go check out. We're working our way there. I was on a 30 minute roll on I'm making your own beads. <laughs> it's $20 for these towers. These towers are really cool. Three bucks for stuff like this. I found a really cool pyrite bear for three bucks over there. You should get one. I, I, I'll go show you right now. Give me a one second to look at these towers. Yeah, about four dollars. Oh, this one's 
almost eight, but the whole flat is 30. These are pretty lucrative. Oh, weird titanium plated. People love the towers. Got that tower love. I like it when they're really, really big. All right, we're gonna go get that pie right there. And then we'll start off on the other side and meet here in the middle. Those are cute, aren't they? Oh, Do you want so one of those? They're lovely. I'll put your keys in there. Well, no, so All right. So like I said before, they also sell display goods. Some cool rotating sphere stands. These are definitely types of things you can order online, sight unseen. There's some minis here. Little wooden lathe stands. $20 a bag. Looks like probably 50 of them in there. There's some plastic versions. Here's some large light display. Does it rotate as well? I like on a motor. I think so. Not enough light in here to really make these spin. These would probably work a little bit better outside than they would inside. <clears throat> and we got some trees over here. Gemstone trees, uh, some kind of clay polymer for the trunk. Got a nice piece of amethyst cluster there for the base. Really affordable. I always appreciate when people make these. A lot of wire. There's even some designer versions I've seen online. I've seen a lady online uh, who makes um, these out of gold instead of a base metal. Some other things like little camping lights and stuff. You know, a lot of people come to Quartzsite not just for the gem show or the RV show or the Tyson Wells show, but they come here just to camp, get out of the cold. I met a few Canadians today. We're here just to stay warm. These are, uh, these are neat. A little compact things with, uh, <laughs> Some fun, something for the kids, you know. Eight in one powerful torch. What does it come with? Um, looks like screwdriver and a flashlight. Got the ballpoint pens, really good. If you're here to vend, you know you're gonna need some of the stuff you might have forgot. You know, you're so worried uh, getting ready to sell rocks and stuff that you forget the little things. I met like 10 people yesterday who forgot to bring bubble wrap and paper wrap and stuff so it is cool that they sell these kinds of things here some watch batteries and whatnot it's cool advertisement for the different uh free forms you might see and beads of course i love red garnet beads i don't feel like i can wear rounded beads very well but I think the garnet ones look good on me. I like to make a super long strand, a good 40 inch strand. Uh, these are $3, not at $2.50. How much are the thicker ones? My favorite are the faceted donut garnets. You almost never see those. Those are probably cut in like the 80s or something. And it just takes so long to facet anything, let alone to facet enough to make a, um, to facet enough to make a, uh, strand, you know? I mean, excuse me. Facet enough beads to make a strand. It's a lot of, a lot of work. Some Labrador Cubies. 
These are cool, these agate, random agate strands. These lava rock. Yeah, they are. These I use a lot to, I ream these to make um, the beads on the back of my necklaces to make them adjustable. Then both um, treated and non-treated rose quartz. Some people don't know, you know, rose quartz is so affordable, people never think about that. Sometimes it might be uh, enhanced. Bring the whole hank on the with the hook to the cashier. This thing cut off the strands. Sometimes it's really easy to pull off, but sometimes, just depending on uh, how the hank was made, it can fall apart, and that's just kind of annoying for the owner, I can imagine. Just look at the floor. How many of these people just just completely wrecked it without having the kindness to put everything back. Fantastic, look at that. Love, smoke quartz, anything. There's some mushrooms there. Ungos. This back wall is just like all specimens. Looks like it's mostly Moroccan specimens. This is a cool one. So, like I've said many times in this video, there is one in Phoenix and one in Tucson as well. Gem shops, that is, or Gem World, excuse me. Uh, they're not as fun as this one, in my opinion. I like just the boxes everywhere, the beads on the ground, even though someone should have picked them up when they broke them. It's like, it's just fun for someone like me. Some people might like it a little bit more. Put together, I dig it. I dig the chaos. I love chaos. These are cool, just random uh, Canadian. Beanies. <laughs> really good price. Some bamboo coral beads. Bamboo coral is an organic creature, but the color is enhanced. Some green ones. I've never seen green versions. Some different beanies. Some nicer amethyst. Standies. You know, everybody was like, oh, I remember the good old days when this was that price or this was that price. And I've only been in the scene for about 10 years, me actually caring, you know? And I can already tell a huge difference in price when it comes to uh, amethyst, for sure, especially the cathedrals, the clusters. And I'm definitely starting to see a huge difference in price when it comes to the beads. There's different bags, these strands. If you just like, oh. Uh, some people like to pick out each one for the different qualities and stuff. Some people um, don't care. They're like, just I need 50 strands. Let's do this. Buy the whole bag. Here are some chips. Looks like some adventuring different things so these are definitely undrilled um half they almost look like they well, they technically are cabochons they're rounded they just have their corners one side of the round flattened and those would have been drilled sideways most likely with two holes to make a stretchy bracelet uh a lot of these here in the bags were actually on their way to be made into beads just a giant bag of adventuring cabochons. These are cool because they're roughly calibrated to the right size, so you can just buy some silver settings, pop them in there. Good to go. Ah, I was talking about these earlier. <clears throat> Those, these rounded things, these are undrilled. Um, like the face rollers for your face or whatever. Those are an undrilled 
thing of those. Sometimes you can find those without the face roller as a bead by themselves. I mean, they're technically a bead. It's a real cool pre-Columbian style shape. I like it. Big bag of Rotonite cabs down there. A little variety pack, actually. It's a little heavy, so I'm not going to grab it. But I mean, like... You can repolish those cabochons, hit them with some chromium oxide, get a great polish, sell four of those pieces right there to pay for the whole bag. A little bit of work off of, uh, I mean, after the tumbled stuff, there's a difference between a great cab and an amazing cab. I wish I knew my stones like you do. Oh, well you can watch my YouTube channel and learn about it all. How can I, how, what is it? Lapidary Dave on YouTube. It should be easy to remember. <laughs> Once you learn, you'll never forget, you know? There's so many different kinds. But then again, it's mostly variation. Like in this store, there's probably less than 30 different kinds. <laughs> and it's just slightly different colors or dyed versions of it or, mm -hmm. you know. Have a great day. Some glasses. Ooh, these boxes are cool. Oh, there's something in them. So these, again, these are the rollers for uh, like your face, just without the hole. these undyed random quartzy bracelets very cool great price <clears throat> if you folks don't mind i'm not going to spend an hour looking at all the different beads you know they're all really affordable you know i'm not going to show off all the prices and look at all these beads i do have videos on um beads. If anyone's interested, you can just look those up. Ooh, those are cool. Those would have been like a rounded rondelle. This is that stuff that we looked at earlier that they were calling kiwi. I've never heard of it before. Is it some kind of granite? Some kind of like... not exactly sure, but these are awesome. Little agate, maybe even flint, just rounded like UFO styled polished things. Those would make great necklaces. Drill a hole in them, charge 25 bucks each. Pays for the bag in two pieces. Again, these are some beads that, or actually no, these are face rollers. This is the back end of face rollers being sold as beads. You know, you can only have so many face rollers in your factory before you want something else to sell. I'm a little worried about picking this bag up, but I really want to look at it. Just gray, chalcedony, flat sided rondelles. Sweet. You know, I'm surrounded by gemstones 24-7, being from New Mexico and being in the industry and being a cutter with a bunch of cutting friends. But uh, I promise the goodness, Gray Chalcedony is actually one of my favorite stones. Hands down. I absolutely love it. Yo, Holmes. Que siendo hoyo. Hey, bro. These guys are definitely from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hands down. <laughs> Smoking that wood tip. Is that a 40 of, what is that, like steel reserve? <laughs> this is a, a actual picture of my, my ex-girlfriend there.
And uh, this is an actual photo of me there in the middle. This must be see no evil, hear no evil, smell no evil. I think that's what that is. Awesome. Those are fun. Highlights. Here's uh, undeniably those beads I was talking about earlier, the longer face rollers. That would be so cool to just incorporate your uh, jewelry designs into. Those beads are really cool. You find a lot of stuff like that from African Village and such, you know? Uh, some of those beads, like the old Carnelian ones, uh, that are were eventually replicated by Germans. Or maybe they were made by the Germans to, to trade with for African goods back in the days. The story um, can go for hundreds of dollars a piece. The vintage ones from the 1800s. This looks like a random bag of gray chalcedony nodules. Maybe it's a sign. Maybe I should be surrounded by gray chalcedony nodules. Or just gray chalcedony, like I was saying. I might come back for you, little buddy. This is neat. These are some really light, just a bag, unmarked bag. This could be literally 20, 30 years old. Bag of cabochons. Is it? It almost looks like jade. I don't, I don't know if it could be, but let me tell you something, folks. You've heard it from me many times. Jadeite jade from Myanmar, from China, from Kazakhstan, um, you know, from Turkey, even from Guatemala, it does not have to be super expensive. There's hundreds of different variations and different qualities of the material. And uh, I used to buy stretchy bracelets of Jadeite jade from Myanmar being sold at the Tucson show for $1 a bracelet. I mean, those are, I mean, there's a few different things, there's like sodalite in here and stuff, but this stuff, oh, it does look like Myanmar jadeite without any color. I got it. Oh, it's locked, so. It really does, no joke. If it is, I mean, just people who like jadeite, people don't know you can get jadeite really affordably, that bag could be worth a couple thousand dollars. Not, well, technically worth whatever you're paying for it. Like, Mr. George isn't getting, isn't not getting his money worth for these because you can go to Myanmar and buy a bunch of extremely low quality jadeite pieces for five, six, seven, eight, ten, twenty dollars a bag like this. But when you get it to the people who want the jadeite, especially people who are into metaphysical stuff, that's where the value comes from is the networking, the sourcing. Getting it to the people who want it for any particular reason it doesn't have to be a million dollar bangle. You can buy affordable jade. It does exist. Those are neat. I might go buy that bag. I, I want to know what it costs. Let's go back and see if we can see. Oh, man. <laughs> Even if it's not, just making pendants out of this, I, I'd get my money back, even if I just drilled holes in them and charged a dollar each. <coughs> Some of them have little holes there. I think I'm gonna buy that. I don't see any other ones around. Bring to cashier for price. So yeah, no prices, but I don't see any other ones of those. Little bag of spheres, like I was saying. What's the difference between um, spheres and really large beats? So I'm pretty sure that's the same machinery. It's just, here in America, sphering can be very expensive. Highland Park machines cost about, I think between like, 25 and five thousand dollars maybe per machine a lot of people use two different machines you use the high speed machine and the slower speed machine so just the investment ah here they are there they is 
You think this is the same stuff? Uh, no, these are different. These are definitely different. Definitely cut at the same time by the same factory. I want that old dusty one though. That old dusty one's got character. And <laughs> some weird floaty things around. You know, why are there weird things floating around in that bag? Well, uh, whoa. Those are cool. If those are metal, I'd buy them all. Uh, some kind of pearl. Oh, well, because when, you know, even here, like, there's beads floating around, and when you're cleaning up the factory over there where they're bagging up those bags, a few pieces of different material are going to wind up in other bags. Just think of it as a bonus. Some Dr. Mario stuff over some Dr. Mario pills. I saw this thing about Dr. Mario if you beat the game in a certain way like the hardest difficulty or something it shows like these aliens and like someone gets abducted by a ufo or something those are really cool i should probably get a bag of these for my grandfather so i could drill these through the side and then he can etch like ohms and stuff in there then i'll repolish it with some like oh uh i could repolish it with some, I don't know, aluminum oxide. This is actually really, really cool. I think I'm gonna get one of these for my grandpa, I'll share it with him. And uh, I can, since I'm not, I don't have good calligraphy with a micro motor like he does, I could just inlay like some chipped turquoise in there or inlay a piece of pearl and he could be a really good seller. Definitely gonna have to grab one of those bags. I suppose you could sit it on one of the square There's some more small cabs. Tiny little teardrops. These are nice. So these are very similar to those beads I was telling you that were coming out of uh, Germany into Africa. They were carnelian, but I think they were faceted long ways, like long stripe facets. Again, uh, something that would have been on the strand, just easier to put it in a bag. Probably a lot more affordable that way as well. These are super cool. So what these are, are um, you'd see these a lot on the ends of stretchy bracelets. I know, almost look like cigarette holders. You can easily make them into cigarette holders. You can probably get like 20, 30 bucks each for that after you drill it, but the hole is everything. Believe it or not, it is so easy to carve it into the shape using particular lathes and stuff and then throw it in a tumbler. The hole is everything. A lot of people don't know how to drill holes inside of harder stones. Some cool gemstone rings. I have a great video on how to make gemstone rings using a drill press. If anyone is interested, make sure to check that out. Maybe just type in gemstone ring making, or maybe you have to type in Lapidary Dave to find my particular video, but it's pretty easy. The, um, so coring, buying a core, buying a core drill bit is really, really, really affordable if you're buying the larger diameters. To get the smaller diameters, like a beading hole, 2.5 millimeter, 3 millimeter, it can be really tricky because there's a lot more that can go wrong. It's easier to break the bit when the bit is smaller. It's easier to break the stone when the hole is smaller. So um, I personally use a Gunther water swivel by the Gunther multi... Well, I use a Gunther multi-drilling system from Gunther, Germany. Check it out. Absolutely fantastic company. Um... And I have multiple videos on it if anyone's interested in seeing that. But um, yeah, to make a ring, you can buy like a five, six pack of just cheap plated core bits from Amazon. And it'll cost like 20, 30 bucks. And they last quite a while. And that you do submerge. You might hear me when I drill by hand. I never submerge. I have it drip onto my stone. It's the water drip on the stone instead of submerging my stone in water. Well, when using core bits, you use a nice like container and you do submerge it. Uh, you probably want to use a vise so it's not moving all around, especially on harder stones, it's going to want to drift. But pretty much you just drill out a small hole, however big you want the inside of the, what the size that you want to fit on your ring. Then you drill, again, 
a larger hole, and then you work the outside of that stone. And that's a real easy way to, to hog out the foundation for a gemstone ring. It takes about three or four minutes to, to knock out that foundation. And uh, everyone loves gemstone rings. Be careful. If it's something like obsidian or quartz, you don't want to hit it on a glass table and break it on your finger. This is cool. This looks like, um, it says 65 and up. Uh, higher quality specimens. Look at that flat of vanadinite for like, what, 65, 70 bucks? That is incredible. You could sell two of these pieces, two of these pieces and make your money back. You could literally drive a U-Haul down here once or twice a year and make your living off <laughs> of just this one shop in Quartzsite. And there's another one in uh, Tucson and another one in Phoenix. It says if you open it, you buy it. Why do you have to buy it if you open it? Well, because people are opening these, like you see here, they're taking out specimens, they're swapping stuff around. It's really rude when people do that. They don't want to sell these individually. You have to buy the whole flat. For instance, this whole flat is uh, $40. You take out half of it and switch it out with a higher quality lot and you bring up the $40 bin to try to save some money, you're really hurting the other lot, you know? There's some little, little vanadinite nuggies right there. Some bags. Packaging, you know, giving out nice stuff with the stuff you sell really goes a long way. Even if it's just a felt bag or something, you know? Some glass products, some base metal beads and such. Is this glass? That's pretty cool. Some earring findings. Some base metal findings. Some wooden bowls up there. I made out of bamboo, right? Bamboo. What I would love to see them well I know they have it at the Tucson um warehouse, Gem Gem World's Tucson warehouse is their sinew. Uh it's really affordable. Here through Mr. George. They can go for twenty-five dollars a roll for the uh waxed cotton or waxed linen sinew, where here I think they're like seven dollars. Wow, look at the mama. That's right over here. Incredible. And there's these guys down here following me around. <laughs> the gray Chalcedonies. I love this stuff for some weird reason. I just love gray Chalcedony. I like it in bead form. I like it in cab form. I like it um, all around. I like it all. Something about that material makes me really happy. Some dusters for your RV. Different scales. I need a small scale. Mine's covered in like rock juice. <laughs> uh, and I, and you know, there's nowhere to get a scale in Taos to so get them from head shops. 